Dr. Jacob Glanville. He's an immunologist and co-founder of a company on, that works with vaccine technology. He's joining us from San Francisco. Uh, Dr. Glanville, thanks for being with us. Now, first off, what's your understanding of just how safe this Oxford AstraZeneca jab is? Sure. So the challenge that we're facing is that there appear to be some cases of blood clots that are forming in some subjects. The, the concern by uh, many epidemiologists and scientists is that there's been an overreaction by some national groups to pause the vaccine. Uh, the concerns are based on the fact that the people who received the control vaccine also had some clots. Now, there's some also some biological reasons why you should look at this, and that is that we know that the coronavirus itself uh, is able to induce clots in some of the people who become infected. So there's biologically plausible that a vaccine that resembles the virus on the outside could do the same. However, at this point, the data seems uh, not to sufficiently support the drastic actions that have been taken by some of these nations. Uh, it is important to look, and human safety is, of course, important. But if I were to predict at this point, I would suspect that after review, the nations that have paused the use of this vaccine will resume the use of this vaccine. Yeah, I think the numbers are about 37 or 40 blood clot cases and maybe 17 million or so vaccinations. So it is a, a really small number. And I, and I was wondering, with your expertise in sort of vaccine technology, is there a surprise that the AstraZeneca vaccine is the one that seems to have problems, being as it's the old technology, it has part of the coronavirus in it, versus the new vaccines with mRNA tech that's used by Pfizer and BioNTech? You know, you really hit the nail on the head with that one. That's right. People uh, were anticipating, really, they didn't know what to expect with the novel RNA vaccines because they were relatively new. That said, they had been used on other viruses in the 10 years leading up to this outbreak, but on limited phase trials. So uh, those vaccines have turned out to look pretty good. They're very effective and they have pretty clean profiles. People just don't feel that well afterwards. Uh, whereas this other vaccine, the AstraZeneca vaccine, is based on a technology that's uh, more established in vaccine science. But ultimately, this is why we run clinical stu uh, studies. As you mentioned, there really aren't that many cases of blood clots, and people do spontaneously just get blood clots unrelated to vaccination. So right now, they're trying to understand, is there a risk? And to keep it in perspective, many, many women around the world choose to take uh, uh, pre preventative pregnancy pills, and those have a much elevated risk of uh, introducing blood clots. Now, that doesn't take away from the concerns people may have when they begin to associate blood clots with vaccines. But for comparison, it's much more dangerous to take the pill uh, for them than this vaccine. Uh, and Dr. Glanville, finally, then, just maybe slightly outside your area of expertise, but I'm sure you can comment on it. This will have done nothing to improve people's confidence about taking vaccines. So what can be done to make sure the messaging that gets across that vaccines are safe to use and, and people really need to take them? I mean, that's really the big concern. If, if everyone responded in a perfectly rational way, I wouldn't worry so much about a pause to go look at data. I think the concern here is that many people who are a little bit on the fence about whether they want to take a vaccine are now more cautious and more concerned. And that isn't just the AstraZeneca vaccine. We've seen that people are less likely to go take the other vaccines as well. I think the way to get us back on track, which, which we really do need, these vaccines are safe and effective, and the coronavirus is something you do not want to get, is the resumption of uh, the vaccine, if it's warranted. I, I think it's fair for a scientific review to take place. Uh, and then, again, the communication of the benefits of being vaccinated. My, my hope is that increasingly people will watch. Those who have been vaccinated are being able to benefit from rejoining society uh, and being able to uh, share space with their loved ones in a way that causes those who haven't been vaccinated uh, yet to change their minds. Absolutely. Okay, uh, Dr. Jacob Glanville, do appreciate your time, sir. Thanks for being with us.